Indonesia stands up to China over Natuna Island and they show that Indonesia is becoming self-aware. But before we get started, if you want to keep up to date with Australia's first and only geopolitically focused YouTube channel, make sure you click the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on anything. So, Indonesia stands up to China. I was a little bit surprised at the action that Indonesia has taken recently over Natuna Island. It's not something new, by the way. This has been happening over the last 12 months. It's been slowly escalating to the point where Indonesia has actually taken a stand. Uh, Jokowi Widodo has met up with Xi Jinping uh, five times since he's been president. And the entire time he has not mentioned the Muslim Uyghurs who are being... Uh, being re-educated in uh, these education camps in uh, Xinjiang, which is a little bit surprising for Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim population on planet Earth. But recently, uh, Jokowi Widodo went to Natuna Island and inspected the island. And uh, what he's done is he's planned to uh, increase their naval presence around Natuna Island, which is an Indonesian island. It's been an Indonesian island since, I believe, it was 19, uh, 1942, 1945, where it was handed to uh, Indonesia from Japan, and Japan controlled it for possibly 100 years prior to that. If you have a look at where Natuna Island is, it is outside the Nine Dash line of the South China Sea. And uh, just a little bit of a... Uh, uh, for you guys that aren't aware, uh, I think most of you guys are aware, but the South China Sea, the Nine Dash line, China pretty much annexed the entire sea based off a... Uh, based off a map, a historical map that they found. They pulled out a map and they said, look, uh, we own the sea <laughs> and well naturally Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, uh, all these countries, uh, Taiwan, all these countries that uh, would like to use that sea and saw it as international waters uh, disagreed. So what they did was they went to an international tribunal in The Hague and the international tribunal in The Hague ruled against China and said look China you can't just take other people's sea just because you're greedy. And China said, uh, well, okay, well, what we're going to do is we are going to annex some reefs. And these reefs had a ton of sea life. They, they, were, they had coral. These, these reefs had so much sea life. And China just uh, brought all of these uh, uh, drenching type uh, ships that drench sand off the, the, the floor of the sea and they built these artificial islands and just covered these reefs in sand and killed everything in it. So all of you uh, Greta fanatics, why don't you say something about China? And China's also the largest emitter of global pollution. Uh, yet we have all these climate change fools rioting in Australia because you guys are idiots. You re they really are idiots. Focus on the, uh, the biggest threat to climate change and the environment, and that's China. Don't go messing with all these smaller countries because you will get nothing done. And that's just more evidence that you guys are idiots. Um, so they destroyed all the sea life, and then they militarized the sea and took the South China Sea. Now, at that point, America woke up. Uh, Barack Obama uh, said that he's going to pivot to Asia, Asia and he did nothing. <laughs> and uh, since then, we thought that China would remain within their sea. They have a massive armada of uh, fishing vessels that have just been uh, fishing out, overfishing, the South China Sea, destroying all the wildlife. Uh, China has too many mouths to feed. There's 1.4 billion people and China's gone from a, a poor third world country to being the richest and most powerful country on earth. And they're drenching the sea dry. They're just killing everything in their way and eating it pretty much. And uh, more evidence came out this week of that. 
uh, with a giant 200 million year old Chinese paddlefish has recently become extinct. Not to mention the hundreds or even thousands of other types of fish and uh, sea life that China has been killing uh, since they have become the, the richest and most powerful country on earth. Uh, they're also not happy with just the South China Sea, which they illegally annexed. They're now going into other people's territory, and that's where Natuna Island comes in. Natuna Island is outside of China's territory, and they've been sending fishing vessels in there, but not just fishing vessels that have been uh, creeping outside of their territory and we can blame the whoever owns the the, the company what it, it is uh, it is a state sanctioned uh, illegal fishing uh, kind of expedition that they are doing because these uh, fishing vessels are being shadowed by the PLA's Navy <laughs> so Xi Jinping is aware that these fishing vessels are going into other people's waters and fishing out their waters, overfishing the entire Asia. Uh, what happens when China has finished overfishing the entire Asia? I don't know, maybe no fish left. Uh, that's really where we're heading. China is not only a threat to the world's sovereignty, uh, this communist dictatorship, uh, our freedoms, our lives, but they're a threat to uh, the environment, they're a threat to our ability to enjoy a good life. Uh, the, the, the amount of negatives uh, about China, just the copious amount of negatives, you just cannot count on, on one hand. Uh, but yeah, so... I just thought I'd bring that to you guys' attention that uh, when I went to Indonesia recently, uh, I made some contacts over there and I've been in contact with a journalist and apparently this article from the Jakarta Post is uh, real and that uh, Indonesia is taking this seriously. And that gets, that gets me to the next part of this conversation that we're having is that Indonesia is becoming self-aware. Uh, Indonesia is projected to be the fifth largest economy in the world soon. They, their economy is going to overtake Australia's. And you can understand why their economy is going to overtake Australia's is because Australia allows in far too many parasitic refugees and past, far too many parasitic immigrants that just go on welfare and destroy our economy within and they're literally no use to us. They're literally parasites. Um, uh, the demographic shift within Australia is import the third world and well we're becoming the third world uh, our economy is on the decline because we have so much trash in this country and it's destroying our con economy from within um, we don't have a Donald Trump to build a war and protect us in fact we just have parasites within our government that want to allow more parasites in and they want to destroy it for the rest of us now, <laughs> I went on a little bit of a rant there, uh, but uh, that brings me to Indonesia's economy overtaking ours. And Indonesia, uh, since Australia was established in 1788, we have never had a powerful Indonesia on our doorstep. We have always had this weak, poor, third world country that our maritime trade just goes through Indonesia. We've never really had to worry about Indonesia, but in the near future, their economy is going to overtake us. Their navy's uh, larger than ours, their air force is larger than ours. And soon, Indonesia will become self-aware enough that they will start calling the shots. We will have to be submissive to Indonesia. I'd like to hear your comments about this, but this is where we're headed. Uh, when Indonesia is bigger and more powerful than us and our naval trade, our economy relies on this naval trade, goes through Indonesia, Indonesia be effectively becomes our boss and they will start calling the shots. And uh, uh, my theory is that because this is going to happen into the near future, I, I believe that we should be sending a lot of our, say, 18 to 21-year-old uh, university students to Indonesia and sponsoring them uh, to move there, possibly 
for a year at a time to learn Bahasa Indonesia and to Indonesian so that they can at least uh, speak the language fluently and then come back and then we'll have a whole new uh, batch of diplomats that will be able to understand Indonesia and be able to help us navigate the future trouble that we are going to have with Indonesia and that's only going to happen through uh, constant uh, we, we need to understand Indonesia enough to be able to negotiate with them and, and the best way would be right now why the Australian dollar is still worth something it's not going to be worth so much in the near future but we're going to need people who can speak their language and understand their culture uh, to connect with them into the into the future because Indonesia when they're self-aware and they're not quite self-aware just yet but in the near future they will become self-aware enough to start calling the shots and we need to be prepared to deal with that into the near future I'd like to hear what your guys comments uh, are on this how do you think we should deal with Indonesia how do you think we should uh, keep the peace because that's where we're headed uh, and I just thought I'd bring that to your guys attention today uh, Indonesia is becoming a lot more self-aware and, and I think it's scary for us Australians there's also a book that I've been going through recently I discovered this a month ago and I, I just read the chapter on China. I, I didn't read any other chapters. The, uh, the Frightened Country by Alan Renouf. This guy, this was written in 1979. And uh, he's a diplomat, educated in Sydney Boys School, uh, first class honours degree in law, and he worked in the Supreme Court. And he wrote this this book which in 1979 everything he says about China in this is 100% accurate uh, he alludes to how much of a threat China is uh, it's a dictatorship how America has been at war with China for well since the the 50s the, the Korean War was really a war against China the Vietnam War was really a war against China and it just seems to me that since this book was written, uh, Australia has become dumb. <laughs> and my entire life I was brought up being told that China is our friend. Uh, how did we go from knowing that China was a threat to being uh, brainwashed into thinking that China is our friend? And now we've become self-aware again. Only in the last 12 months the media has woken up again. To start saying that China is our uh, is our enemy. <laughs> what happened between 1979 and say 2018? What has happened between this? What happened there? That's what that's what I'd like to know. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments because I don't have an answer for this. This book was written before I was born. Uh, but uh, I just thought I'd bring that to you guys' attention. And yes, I would like to know what you think about this book and what has happened in that period between 1979 and, 19, uh, say, 2018. What was this brainwashing of the Australian people? And uh, also, how do, you, how do you think we should deal with Indonesia in the future? I'll see you guys in the next video.